Hello everyone, my name is Daniel and I'm just a casual racer and today we're back in Assetto Corsa because the Grand Prix of Arlington Circuit is already available for the Assetto Corsa Meet community. It's an entirely free track, is a beta, you can see some of the buildings here don't have textures and stuff and I think some of the widths aren't exactly right, we obviously don't have published data yet on this. But it is really cool to jump in here and we're starting the back stretch so when we get around to the front I'll show you the track layout and walk you through the corners and give you what I some pointers and things that I've noticed when driving this quite a few times already. And so I think one reason why too the creators put the AI and the starting grid and all that on that back stretch is just because it's longer and kind of that traditional long stretch where you can have a lot of grid spots and just make sure you're gonna have a good start. Whereas you'll see at the start finish line which is gonna be up coming into the final corner here you're gonna see it's a little bit interesting how it's gonna be so I'm up here into the braking zone got a little bit of kind of a hairpin here the final corner I've got the cars the cars are paid cars by VRC and in the track as well as the 2024 paint schemes here also linked down the video description and they're both entirely free all right so this is the start finish line and we got this opening left hander we're gonna go under the VIP section where all the top Texas Cowboys uh, you know Excuse me, Dallas Cowboys, Texas Rangers, and IndyCar Bigwigs will be hanging out. Turn two is a right-hander followed by that 90-degree left-hander. We got the Dallas Cowboys Stadium, a.k.a. Jerry World, off to our left. And then we're going to come up to another left-hander here as we're going to head into the parking lot section. I think this section kind of reminds a lot of people of what Formula One's Miami circuit has done. Um, oh, power down a little bit. I'm going to go through here. You got this hairpin. And then you're going to go through here, what I think will actually be slightly wider here, based on some of the aerial render images I've seen. And then it's going to actually tighten up. So a lot of opening lines, and then you're going to have some opportunities to defend, but there's a lot of different ways that cars could be coming from to make a move on you. And then you got two right-handers here. We head back onto the streets. Here's the 90 degrees. We head onto the back straightaway, where we also will be where we started our lap. line along here. We're going to push to pass here through this kind of snaking, almost mile-long back stretch. Really a unique a stretch of the track that I find to be a lot more interesting in the ground level than I thought it would be based on some of the renders and the mat the track layout, actually. Got that right-handed, that's going to be a huge passing opportunity at the end of the long straightaway. But then actually here we got a nice run here as well up into another right-hander that I think if you didn't finish at the end of the long straightaway, you could finish a pass here or even get passed back by a car if you're not defending correctly or maybe you're out of push to pass or you've lost your tire advantage. I'm going to run down here. We see Jero World off into the distance as we come into the final corner, heavy braking zone. We go through kind of this baby hairpin onto the front straightaway and that completes a lap of the Arlington Grand Prix Street Circuit. Definitely an interesting circuit. I really like it. I'm going to be interested to see what you know exactly IndyCar does with this track. Uh, we don't have exact width, right, for the craters. And so the craters having to be a little bit creative with how they've done this circuit. For example, this corner here, being that it's going to the parking lot, I think this is going to have more width here. Such a slow crawl right now. Really tight. So I think that'll be widened. You go into this section here, right? This could easily have a one or two degrees of banking as well to provide different, more different lanes, really provide some action. You're gonna have some stadium seating off to the right there. And I really think this is gonna be a section they want some action for. And as it is in the simulator right now, I'm not getting, I'm being underwhelmed by that section. In contrast, when we come around to this back straightaway, I'm extremely impressed by this back straightaway. I think this is going to be a lot of fun. I'm going to show you the action zone on this circuit. This is going to be where you want to buy your tickets if you live here and you're looking to go to this event. And so we're going to fly along here, look to make a move. Got the push to pass on. I'm sure the drivers are going to push to pass on this back straightaway. Make as many moves as they can. I'll be curious to see if they try to attempt this pass in the snaking section. We got up here, right? You can pass a car on the straightaway. That's very likely with push to pass. Let's get in a slipstream especially if like a tire advantage or whatever. Then you could pass a car easily into that 90 degree corner at the end of the straightaway. And then you could even pass a third car here, this 90 degree corner. And so cars that are moving up or have a lot of push to pass or just have a tire advantage could easily pass three cars in short succession there. So that's where the action is by the Texas Ranger Stadium. That's where there's gonna be the action. 
run a little deep in that corner. We're all right. It is a hairpin. It's got a little bit of room to do that. And we're around again. We do look like we're going to end our lap at the start-finish line. So we just started on the back stretch, but we will end the race on the front stretch. And we have just damaged our wheel by touching the wall a little bit, so we'll have to manage that for the rest of this race. It'll be interesting to see, right? A circuit like this can, even without it being, you know, necessarily based on the blueprints and things like that, this circuit could still provide valuable feedback. Let's see a driver, right? I don't know if they have a circuit that they've developed that's on the simulators for the IndyCar drivers and stakeholders to use. But it is definitely something that, you know, for example, iRacing works with NASCAR to do to develop digital versions for the stakeholders when they're in the development process for new circuits anymore. And so that's definitely something that somebody could be brought in. For example, Authentic Simulation, one of my studios I have, we worked with the Stock Car Pro Series down in Brazil. They were doing their first street race in a decade, the Belo Horizonte circuit. And so we were brought in and we developed the circuit based on blueprints and based on aerial data and lighter data and all of that. And we, they were able to test it. The drivers were able to test it. We provided feedback. Stakeholders and engineers were able to find feedback. Refinements were made. And that made it so much easier for them when they jumped into the actual one to two week window to develop the circuit. They already have an idea of what they needed to adjust and adapt to provide a great racing show and also a great experience for the drivers. And so I'm curious to see, you know, does IndyCar have anyone like that developing a digital version? We've seen renders, but that is not a game-ready or simulation-ready model. This is, this could be something where drivers jump in and they get a feel and they're able to kind of provide a sense of the circuit. Um, be awesome if IndyCar wanted to reach out to like Authentic Simulation, for example, want to work with us or something like that, or maybe they're already working with iRacing. But even if they don't have that ability right now, I'm already getting a great sense for how this circuit will feel, and I'm relatively impressed by it um, here in this simulator. You know, IndyCar has a great opportunity here. The best of what maybe Formula One and other major racing series offer, they can bring that to the table. And they can also bring some of the best of the grassroots nature of IndyCar racing. Combine those two things and they could have perhaps that elusive third triple crown kind of event. I know a lot of people want to see an oval, right? Whether it's a 500 mile race, maybe being brought back at Pocono or just an oval race somewhere. But the problem is NASCAR either owns most of the oval racetracks or they definitely have their finger on the scale. Even Pocono, which is an independent track, the major event is a NASCAR event. And if at the end of the day, push comes to sub and NASCAR says you can't host an IndyCar event, then they aren't going to host an IndyCar event. And that's why events like this, where you don't have that same competition, that same influence from someone who ultimately could be a very much a detractor to your sport and your series, uh, you don't have that same influence. And so it's going to be a big deal, I think, for IndyCar to work with the stakeholders here, the you know the Texas Rangers, the Dallas Cowboys, and anyone else in this area. You don't really have to worry about Formula One trying to come in and take over this event. They're already at the Circuit of Americas here in Texas, and they're not going to do a second Texas event. So the big thing you have to worry about is NASCAR. And if you can work to make this be a major event, it's going to be earlier in the season, right? Most likely it's going to be the second or third race you know, after the St. Petersburg. That's either before or after Thermal Club. And so this could be a major race for the future of IndyCar that what's important is not that it just promotes the Arlington Grand Prix, but that it also promotes the entire IndyCar series as a whole and becomes a major series or major event for that purpose. We're continuing around here. It looks like we may actually end up finishing on the back straight away. Come around here. Up in 19th position. The slight damage to my right front has limited my potential lap times here, so we haven't really made a lot of inroads, but doing good enough to finish this race in at least a decent position up, you know, almost 10 positions. So yeah, and I think like you have sections like this, right? A lot of, reminds a lot of people of the Miami F1 circuit, and if it's done poorly, it could be a little bit tacky, a little cheesy. But if it's done well, this could be a really cool stadium section. You add a little banking, uh, you know, you, it's got the right width. That could be a lot of fun. There could be some potential for overtakes or at least a lot of different lines and cars, you know, flying through that section. 
And then of course you have the traditional street courses, some great right-handers, and this really impressive to me back straightaway that snakes along that I think is going to be really exciting. You have some really crazy high speeds heading straight into an action zone where you're going to just have you know, two great corners for overtaking as well as of course the slipstreaming to push to pass potential here on this back straightaway. down, we shift our way down to the gears here. Because we are going to finish up at the uh, start finish line. We got the, you know, I think I'm really impressed too if we talk about this 3D model or this track. Got some nice 3D models here with these stadiums. I think they look great. Got the big landmarks. Um, really excited to see what these guys do. They got some texturing they can do in some of those big skyscraper buildings, but I'm already getting a great feel for this circuit. So really hats off to these mod creators. It's awesome they got it out for everybody so soon. And we're going to finish our race here in 19th position. I hope you guys check out these links. Um, I think this is really a lot of fun, a great combination. I'm sure there's a lot of you too here that are just IndyCar fans and are just interested in watching the, seeing the circuit from kind of a driver's eye already. And hopefully this was helpful video for you and all of that. But most of all, I hope that every single one of you has a fantastic rest of your week.